Welcome to Neurology Now and our podcast about hereditary spastic paraplegia, or HSP. I'm Stephanie Stevens. Our guest today is Dr. Craig Blackstone in the neurogenetics branch of the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Blackstone, thanks for joining us. So how do you define HSP and what symptoms does it cause? Well, hello, Stephanie, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, HSP is an inherited disorder that's caused by mutations in genes. It affects some of the body's longest nerves, mainly the nerves that travel from the brain that's near the top of the head all the way down the spinal cord into where about the lower back. Now, the main clinical feature of the HSPs is an increase in muscle tone, and that's known as spasticity. This occurs mostly in the legs in these patients and can also be associated with some weakness. Thus, together, these affect the ability to walk. Uh, sometimes there are also other associated symptoms. There are two types of HSP, yes? Yes, there are two main forms clinically, though about 70 different genes have, have been found to be mutated in the HSPs. In the so-called pure forms, there is leg spasticity and we, walking difficulties, sometimes with changes in the ability to urinate. Uh, but there are also complex or complicated forms, and in these forms, there are other prominent and variable clinical features that can include things such as muscle involvement, neuropathy, visual changes, seizures, uh, impaired coordination, or changes in cognition. Can it be prevented or cured? Uh, currently, there are no ways to prevent or cure HSP. How common is it, and who's most likely to get it? Uh, so across different populations, the prevalence of the HSPs range from about 2 to 9 individuals out of every 100,000 people. Uh, so for comparison, uh, the well-known or the much better known uh, neurologic disorder, Lou Gehrig's disease or amyotropic lateral sclerosis, has a prevalence of about four individuals per 100,000. So it's about the same. Uh, HSP is a genetic disorder, and those uh, with other members of their family affected are certainly at increased risk. Also, in populations where it is common for relatives to marry one another, uh, certain types are also much more common. How is it diagnosed? Uh, well, in those patients with other affected family members, a DNA testing for HSP gene mutations would likely be performed very early in the evaluation. However, for those individuals without a clear family history, uh, typically a number of examinations and tests such as head and spine MRI, EMG and nerve conduction studies, and a lot of blood tests would have been performed. Uh, usually without any obvious cause for their symptoms. Increasingly, however, these patients are being tested for mutations in known HSP genes as these tests are more widely available and cost less money. Now, a genetic diagnosis is certainly the most definitive and I think ultimately will be the gold standard for uh, diagnosing HSPs. And as awareness of HSP increases among medical professionals and the public, the rate of diagnosis will certainly increase. Dr. Blackstone, what treatments currently exist and how effective are they? Well, treatment is individualized and usually emphasizes decreasing spasticity or treating some of the associated symptoms that patients with complex forms may suffer from. Uh, in general, the therapies are effective for alleviating symptoms, but very, very few patients get complete relief of symptoms with the currently available therapies. Now, most patients benefit from physical therapy to teach them how to maintain flexibility and to exercise safely, uh, as well as to be fitted for any assistive devices they might need. Uh, there are also a number of prescription drugs that can decrease the spasticity in some patients. Uh, baclofen is one commonly used medication, but there are others as well. And, and finally, uh, there are some interventional therapies ranging from the injection of botulinum toxin into selected leg muscles uh, all the way to the implantation of pumps that can deliver medications like baclofen directly into the spinal fluid. Please explain the connection to genetics here. Sure. Uh, well, HSPs are genetic disorders, uh, and although variations in genes from one person to another are very common, alterations in specific uh, genes uh, can cause uh, proteins to be made incorrectly and, and thus cause disease. Uh, now, for nearly all genes, people have two copies, one from their mother and one from their father. And there are about 70 different genetic types that can cause HSP, and these can be transmitted by three main um, modes of inheritance, we term it. The first is autosomal dominant. 
Now, in this form, a person only needs an abnormal gene from one parent who may have the disease. And because of this, it is often seen in multiple generations, although what we term as de novo or new mutations can also occur. A second possibility uh, for inheritance is autosomal recessive, and this requires the presence of mutations in both gene copies. So in other words, both mothers and fathers carry a mutation that they pass on, though they themselves have no symptoms typically. Now, recessive disorders tend to present in only one generation, and most often in populations where in individuals marry close relatives. And the third and, and for the most part, final uh, main uh, pattern of inheritance uh, is X-linked. And in that uh, form, a gene mutation on the X chromosome causes symptoms in males who are what are termed hemizygous for the gene mutation, and that means that they have a mutation on their only X chromosome. And remember, males also have a Y chromosome. Now, females have two X chromosomes and thus are much less likely to be afflicted because abnormalities in both X chromosomes would be required for the disorder to develop. So what does the future hold in terms of promising research? Well, one of the uh, really dramatic improvements uh, in, HSP, in the HSP research field has been due to the explosion in uh, genetic capabilities. The cost of genomics has uh, gone way down, and in fact, the, the power of genetic studies has gone way up. And that has allowed a large number of new genes that can cause HSP to be identified. In fact, I think there have been about 20 new genes identified this year alone. Uh, now, the protein products of these genes are under intense study and will hopefully lead to a better understanding of the underlying uh, causes of these disorders. And in fact, in many of these studies, it's becoming clear that there's only a relatively small number of what we call converging themes that might be areas where we could develop therapeutics for these disorders. And certainly more and more researchers are tackling problems related to the pathogenesis of the HSPs. So I think that in the future, it'll be very, very likely that we'll be able to start targeting therapies to some of these processes. And that research may have wider applications in medicine, right? Sure. Uh, the symptoms of HSP overlap with those of a number of other neurologic and non-neurological disorders. And certainly it seems very likely that the basic diseases mechanism will overlap as well. And of course, the studying the HSP genes gives us a window into those mechanisms. Uh, and we certainly hope that these insights that we obtain through HSP research will help those with other disorders as well. And some examples of these types of disorders could be uh, neuropathies that affect sensation, Lou Gehrig's disease and other motor neuron diseases, and cognitive disorders that affect uh, people's ability to think and reason. Uh, so our, certainly our hope is that as we uh, find, make inroads into HSP research, that not only our HSP patients will benefit, but also uh, a lot of others with particularly neurologic disorders will benefit from these insights as well. Thank you, Dr. Blackstone, and thank you for joining us here at Neurology Now. I'm Stephanie Stevens.